Hey, Saturday, April 6th. What a beautiful day. Look at the sun. So we had a gale yesterday come through. It was blowing like hell. Um, only saw it in the high 20s here, but I guess at LAX they recorded uh, 41 mile gusts. Um, so it didn't get as bad as I thought it was going to get. But uh, small craft advisory ending at 9. Um, we've got like almost no wind here today. Um, we'll see what we get when we get out in the channel. Hopefully we get a little bit of sailing, but most of the canvas is still on. I'm going to take all the canvas, all the canvas off, then we'll get rigged for uh, sailing just in case. Um, probably we'll put the main up. Um, I think we're going to have six foot waves at like, I don't know, somewhere in the eight to 10 second range. So it might be a little bumpy out there, especially without any wind, um, which will suck a little bit. But from a wind perspective, there aren't any concerns. Um, so hopefully we can get some sailing uh, and shut off the engine. Like that's kind of my goal for today. If uh, if the wind comes up, if not, we'll head over to White Cove and uh, hopefully catch up with a couple of friends. So two days ago, I guess that'd be April 4th, uh, my dock neighbor told me that a they heard an explosion here at the marina and uh, Subsequently, saw a boat on fire. Uh, sounds like it burnt down to the waterline, uh, sunk. Uh, he said the fire boat, I think there's fire boats in, in this basin for LA Harbor. Uh, he said they were uh, you know, on scene in a few minutes, like they were here pretty, pretty quickly, but uh, not enough for total loss for this boat. So I don't know if we'll get a good spot of it. It's gonna be over here somewhere. I can't see from here. Oh, there it is right there next to the Marlin. Yeah, that boat is no more. Six knots of a parent, not much. We're kind of rigged for sailing. I'll uh, think about raising the sails here in a little bit. Um, true's kind of coming this way. Kind of point us down towards Catalina. Um, it's going to be light winds. It'll be fluky and shifty. So, um, you know, it's like whack-a-mole on this boat. You fix one problem and then you've got another one. Um, my VHF reception AIS seems to be working quite well after I resoldered the, uh, cable coming from the antenna side and resoldered that connector and, uh, I'm not getting any alarms on my AIS, which is super cool. Seven knots of true, which is pretty light. Um, I, I usually like to see about nine or 10. It's not that we can't ghost along and uh, six to seven knots. But as I'm looking around, like look at, it's, it's pretty lumpy out. Um, Maybe once we get it, get away from these breakwaters and shore, it'll smooth out a little bit. So a quick update. Um, still having some issues with my um, VHF reception. It looks like uh, AIS is working fair, but I'm, I've still got some signal loss or something going on. Um, Cause Stoked is able to broadcast, I'm able to hear him. But he's not able to hear me, which uh, which I think is likely that if I've got power loss somewhere in one of the connectors, um, you know, I'd be able to hear it better than I'd be able to uh, broadcast. Concerns me a bit because I feel like the issue is going to be on top of the mast, um, which is a real pain in the ass. It's U.S. Navy warship. Uh, I don't know if they have some kind of... It's like, uh, do we just get the dude with the deepest voice possible to intimidate our enemies or what? Pretty good side off the starboard. We can see uh, Althea tanker way out there. Um, about eight miles away. We're gonna come within about uh, mile and a half CPA. So um, normal buffer zone that I have is about two nautical miles. Um, 
these guys should be turning to port. Their AIS says that they are headed to Long Beach. So I actually think um, we'll get in front of them and then they'll start turning this way anyway. So I think we are better off maintaining course than we are uh, heading to starboard at this point and going parallel with the shipping lane. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, probably, have, probably have a little bit better distance from them as uh, they hit that little curve. And I'll, I'll show you where that's at on the chart. You see the shipping lane makes a bend here um, to the left to port. Here's us and here is the Althea. Althea, Althea, sailing vessel keel dragger, sailing vessel keel dragger. Yeah, this is Althea, go ahead. Yeah, um, sailing vessel about seven and a half miles off your uh, port bow. Just getting ready to cross the uh, shipping lanes. I see I've got maybe a little, little over a mile CPA. Just want to confirm I'm okay to maintain uh, speed and course, over. Okay, copy that. Kill Dragger will maintain speed and course. Uh, Kill Dragger standing by on 1 6. So, I mean, even though it's clear, uh, I still kind of like to keep my two mile rule, even though it looks uh, like we're, we're going to have zero issues whatsoever. So, I'm pretty, pretty confident of crossing, and we've got plenty of distance, but I thought I'd, you know, there's like really no extra effort to get them ready. Catalina King, this is Kill Dragger on 1 6, over. Hey, you want to pick a channel? Yeah, how about uh, 6 9 -er? over. Roger. Catalina King, this is Kill Dragger on 6 9 -er. Kill Dragger King, good morning. Hey, where are you guys heading? I think we're heading to White Cove today, over. All right, on yeah, we're just heading towards Toyon. We're about nine miles out, still lumpy on this side. No wind though. Yeah, I was hoping to get a little bit of sailing in. It's uh, light, light wind and lumpy, so there's not much point in putting the sails up right now. Um, looks like I'll be motoring across, and then uh, I guess trying to find the least worst uh, spot to drop the hook tonight. Over. Well, we'll uh, we're doing a toy on and. Fox Landing drop there at Long Point, so once I get in and get back out, I'll uh, give you another call, give you a little conditions update. Okay, I appreciate that. Over. No problem. King clear, 1614. Kill Dragger back to 1-6. Super clear VHF reception for the Catalina King. They are uh, just a hair under five miles away. So the Catalina King is headed to Toyon Bay and then over to Fox Landing at, at uh, Long Point. So they're a 128 foot passenger vessel. And if I zoom in here, I can kind of show you maybe. Toyon, so we're going to White Landing, the White's Landing, Toyon Bay. Uh, a little bit to the east and the long point over uh slightly to the southwest so we'll uh sorry <laughs> this would be the northwest of white's landing um but um so that they'll they'll cross past uh white's landing but they'll be done with their drop-offs and pickups before we get there here's a little bit better view of what i think is going to happen with this tanker althea they're uh over here over to the right of the chart plotter and you can see the shaded area is the buffer zone between uh, northbound and southbound shipping lanes. They're gonna all have this way and then they'll likely uh, take a little hitch to port. And then here we are just kind of entering uh, right over the Marine Cemetery. I don't know if that's a good sign or not, but um, these guys will uh, they'll pass clear of our stern. So Althea is 820 feet of tanker 144 feet of beam which means we only have to avoid 144 feet of water and here they are kind of barreling right down towards us
We stay on our coast, we should be clear. They are at about a distance of four nautical miles. And our CPA's showing 1.73, 1.8. So I think we're gonna be starting to build on our CPA a, a little bit here as they start to turn towards Long Beach. Doesn't look like they've made the turn yet, but they will. So one thing about uh, being out here when you get a bunch of swells coming to the beam and it rocks you pretty hard is it's when stuff gets thrown around in the cabin or sometimes in the top side. There is my Starlink. And if I lost my Starlink overboard, that would be one of those uh, things where it's nobody's fault but my own. Um, it's the downside of when you're sailing solo is you don't have anyone else to blame shit on. Althea behind us. So we actually wound up with the pretty. Oh shit, it's really out. <laughs> we wound up with a, a pretty good uh, CPA actually. Um, they're close to like three miles out right now. So Stokes came out of Long Beach. He's hailing Althea. And I have a really good clear signal on uh, Stokes. So we'll uh, hail him in a little bit. Yes, I'll see how going, kid. Do you want to switch to 6-9-er? Six 6-9. Niner? Six 6-9-er. Six niner. Shelling vessel, this is Althea. Althea, this is the sailing vessel off your port bow. I'm going to take your stern if you're, if you're maintaining that course. Over. Yes, sir, I will, met, I will maintain this course. Thank you very much. Back to 1-6. Thank you, stoked out. 11 a.m. update. We are just uh, a little under three and a half miles, about 3.35 nautical miles from the island. Uh, winds are still bleh. There's not much going on. Getting pretty close. Um, we'd be there in you know, a little over half an hour, probably at this rate. Um, pretty chill out so no traffic nothing to be concerned of look at the island we've had a ton of rain the island is just beautiful right now kill dragger on one six and kill dragger catalina king you want to go uh six niner six niner kill dragger king hey king Skill dragger, over. Hey, good morning. Again, I see you there off my bow. Uh, we're just pulling out a long point. Uh, conditions over there look great. There is a sport fisher anchored right off of Hen Rock, though. But it looks like you might actually have a nice night on the mooring over there. We're on the hook. Yeah, I think we're going to go on the hook. I, I need to see how my uh, new depth sounder is working as I start getting in uh, a little bit closer. Um, but hopefully I can drop the, drop the hook and get a little sleep tonight, over. Oh, yeah. It's nice and calm in there. We had actually had a pretty easy pickup inside Fox, not a lot of surge or swell. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the report. Absolutely, yeah. Keep an eye on your text, too. We sent you a photo from the, uh, the doctor looking towards the anchorage. Awesome. Yeah, I'll look for it. Uh, you guys have a good passage back. Over. Oh, yeah. 209 kids. going to be a fun ride home with those conditions. We had 300 and 196 coming out, 209 going home. Wow, what's your capacity, over? Uh, for insurance reasons, we cap at 550. I'm COI for 810. Wow. Um, okay, that was more than I was expecting. That's cool, though, over. Yeah, the, we're the largest capacity passenger vessel that services Catalina. Uh, and she turns 50 this December. Slightly younger than me. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, uh, she's an old boat, but she's built like a tank. I think we're a little over an inch and a quarter of steel on the hull. Wow, yeah, I bet uh, but she drives a little differently than Keeldrugger under power. Uh, to be 100% honest, watching how much your mast is swinging right now, we're about the same. Yeah, it was uh, swinging a little bit worse out there. It's taming down a little bit as I'm coming into the island. Yeah, 
it started laying down for us about seven miles out. It was pretty comfortable the closer we got. It's uh, This boat used to have ride control, but they got rid of it when they got rid of the big engine. So she used to do 18 knots. Now I'm lucky to get 14. Yeah, that's still not terrible. Yeah, no, we cruise at about 12, 12 and a half. So yeah, I'm glad the uh, glad the gale winds are done. Looks like it's going to be pretty chill the rest of this weekend, uh, and uh, hopefully next weekend I can turn back around and get back out here. Oh yeah, yeah. Next weekend's conditions are phenomenal. It's uh, real nice. And just for your uh, your heads up, avoid Avalon on Friday. We have another cruise ship Friday afternoon. Now oh, I may be headed to Avalon. Friend wants to go there. Ah well, if you come by. Alright, copy that. We'll keep an eye out for you. Right on. We'll talk to you later. King clear 1614. Kill dragger back to 16. Got a drive by of the Catalina King. Just had a nice chat with them. So I learned today that these guys uh, can take over 500 passengers. Getting a nice wave. So we're in super deep water. The depth sounder comes back and it says 118. I don't know if that was the last depth, but as soon as we get under about 500 feet, I'm seeing 421, which kind of corresponds to the chart, I believe. So I think the depth sounder is working nominally. We'll see as we get a little bit closer with this new depth sounder, how things work, but um, I'm encouraged. There is Fox Landing and Rock, White Cove, Moonstone. Call this whole area kind of the White Cove complex. So I was initially thinking about anchoring off of Hen Rock. We got a couple things going on. There's a sports fisher here and there's another smaller boat with the diver down. So we are not going to go drop the hook by these divers. We are down in about 82 feet of water. The hook is set. Just outside uh, White Cove here. About five knots of wind. Uh, maybe it'll swing around a little bit. And so I think we'll be, I think we're in a pretty good spot. It looks pretty calm too. So we'll uh, go ahead and I I'll guess I'll put the snubber on. I still need to do that. So I, I did uh, back down without the snubber. Not ideal, but I'll get that sorted out and then uh, we'll make a little bit of lunch. All right. Bill on sailing vessel blew away. I didn't notice him come in. I was screwing around down below. And sailing vessel stoked is over there. Our quarter till five, not too far out from captain's hour. There's Andy. Sailing vessel stoked coming by for the water taxi service. What up, G? Don't start filming too early. We're, we're filming. It looks like I'm close. You're pretty close. Captain's hour. All right, we officially commence captain's hour. Cheers, brother. Cheers. <laughs> this is so gay with the cameras. Cheers. That's fucking. That's about as gay as it fucking gets. <laughs> that will not make the cut. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it will. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're kind of dealing with an Elon uh, fanboy here. Total, 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So the first thing we want to look at is this uh, Starship. What is this? That's the Starship Torch. The Starship Torch. Let's let's have a, have a look at the Starship Torch. Looks... Yeah. So it looks, it looks like uh, we're not sure exactly... Uh, what you use You're this for exactly? Lay, lay me end down. <laughs> but uh, pointy end up. The, the pointy end up. <laughs> flaming end down. All right. Uh, flaming. We'll use that term kind of loosely. Also. So. Uh, you might turn around. All right. So here it is. Look at that. 
It's a creme brulee machine. A creme brulee machine. <laughs> so that's super badass, actually. And then, and then what? What do we have here, Bill? We have Tesla tequila. Tesla tequila. That's right. Look at that. I don't think people knew that existed. I didn't know it existed. It, it, that is pretty cool. It, they sent me this bottle, and the top was a little broken. Like the thing broke off the thing in yeah. here. So I called them, and they sent me an extra one. <laughs> <laughs> so you got two of them? Yeah. This is the one I've actually drank out of. We could take a shot out of this tonight. All right. Well, we will be doing a review on Tesla tequila. And it comes with the stand and everything. There you go. That's pretty cool. I thought so. That's right on. Bitching, dude. It wow. is. So, uh, Bill, with all of his pull with Elon and uh, his um, little SpaceX um, torch and his Tesla tequila has also arranged a viewing for us today to actually see a SpaceX launch. So we're pretty stoked about that. Thank you, Bill. I I'm really a, appreciate I'm an investor that. And I called he's Elon. an he's an investor. Bill I called, called Elon. Elon. I said, hey, bro, bro, can you set us up with a launch site? We're gonna be out of Catalina. Shoot one of them rockets up. We're gonna be so, in Anchorage. So we're actually uh, gonna get back up on deck here, and at some point, I think we're gonna wind up doing shots of that SpaceX or the Tesla tequila. 100%. We should do it. While Probably the rocket goes up. should be doing while the rocket's going up. Pressure's so, on. The pressure is on. <laughs> you got like T minus two minutes. And we got, we got, yeah, we got like a couple minutes left here. Um, I saw 731. It's a little bit early for that. So uh, we're going to be keeping our eyes open. See the anchor light over there on Keel Dragger shining bright. With what that light cost me, I'm damn glad I can see it from, you know, <laughs> for sure. 150 uh, feet away. Or maybe it's a little bit more than that. Two, one. Ignition. There it is. And the lift off of Falcon 9. We've got the lift Go off of the Falcon 9. How cool is this going to be? I can't wait to see this Falcon rocket. We're scanning the horizon as we speak. I hear something in the background, but that wouldn't be the rocket yet. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Lift off. Cheers, brother. Cheers, bro. Cheers, Bill. Cheers, guys. There's the rocket right there. Okay, it's on a nominal trajectory. So they're out of the uh, the vapor. Uh, no, no, they oh. down to uh, probably Max Q. They, they, they were at Max Q. Above what you see. Throttle down to go through Max Q, and now they're going to throttle back up again. Main engine cutoff, stage separation. So now we're going to be looking for that first stage to start coming down. It's probably going to land right here at Catalina. All right. I just saw the uh, the booster. See the booster up there? Yeah. That is cool. You might be able to see the fairings fall off. There they are. There's the fairings. Best seat in the house here. Right? Oh yeah. So see it up there. We got burgers and or maybe steak. I'm not sure what. Oh, I didn't get the steak yet. We'll do that after. Oh, we'll, we'll do steak after. We've got a we've got a little bit of a fire going on up in here. Not bad. Uh, I I gotta say I'm not super happy with that uh, mass swinging about. Uh, Look at my mass with the rocker but, stoppers. But I am ha happy with the brightness of that new anchor light LED Weems and Plath. And Stokes, you can see in the distance, he's got a pretty good anchor light, pretty, and he's got a rocker stopper. And I would say at this point, earlier in our conversation this afternoon, I was pretty stable and you were bouncing around. Now I'm looking and you're more stable than I am. <laughs> yeah, but who could get out faster? 
I gotta pull up a rocker stopper. Yeah, you gotta pull up a rocker stopper or whatever. But... Good morning. It's about 6.30. Uh, slept in a little bit. I was up kind of in the middle of the night. <clears throat> Got the heater and coffee running. These guys just uh, broke free or not. Looks like they might be drifting. They're tied up to a mooring or what's going on there? I don't see any kind of anchor line. I just don't know what's going on. Okay, this little center console is clearly drifting out to sea. I don't have my dinghy, but uh, Bill from SV Blue Away is launching at the moment. <clears throat> He's gonna swing by and we're gonna mount a recovery operation. Looks like uh, Bill's getting his workout trying to start the dinghy motor. Alright, Bill's attempting the, uh, he's going to attempt the solo recovery operation. I don't know how it's going to be towing. I, can, I guess I can try to tow it with my dinghy. I mean, if you, if you do it with your dinghy, you're going to want to hip tie it to the side. You, you won't be able to steer for shit otherwise. Right. right. Um, and, um, and I might, and I and might have to hip tie it to me too. I mean, I could throw all the fenders on one side and we could try, uh, doing that as well. I think we're going to go with the hip tie plan. I think with the dinghy, that is the, uh, that is going to be the preferred method of recovery here to, t to tow this boat, but we are going to go ahead and get the engine started and warmed up just in case we need to haul. So we'll be ready to go. <coughs> Let's do that now. What the fuck? Uh, that's not good. All right, now I've got, I don't know what's going on, but my, my battery's dead. So, something, is going on pulling from my starting battery. Holy shit. Oh, let's see what's going on with, with voltage here. Looks like 12 something, 10. Jesus. I wonder if uh, there's an issue with my charging battery with my charger all right <clears throat> so my starting battery is dead i am going to do a little bit of a no-no i'm combining my house and my starting battery different chemistry it's not good. All right, <clears throat> I think that's a issue with my charge controller behaving weirdly and uh, pulling signal, pulling juice out of my starting battery. It drug anchor and just went all the way out there. Okay. You guys have the key to start it? Yeah. Oh, nice, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I was, Bill was tending to the uh, recovery operation solo. The owners paddled out on a dinghy and I don't know if they redropped anchor or not. Uh, I, th I think I see them motoring over there. So they're able to come and they had the key they could get her started and all that stuff. Meanwhile, I'm screwing around trying to 
decode what's wrong with my battery situation on my starting battery, I'm pretty confident it's the DC to DC charger wigged out, uh, which is not a good thing because it's like the most important thing on the boat is next to being able to sail is your starting battery. Uh, I mean, aside from, you know, keeping water out, you know, and that kind of stuff, but, um, but that's kind of a bummer. So I'm going to have to take a harder look at uh, whether I want to continue to use this charger or not. Yeah, so I suspect the, the issue is this Sterling DC to DC charger. I disconnected it. Um, I stopped the engine to disconnect it because I thought we had amps pouring into the starting battery. And of course now the engine won't start. So um, it's like the, the cardinal rule of uh, sin here is if you're having engine issues, the best thing to do is just keep the engine running. So I knew better, shame on me. Um, I don't know, I'm looking, now I'm looking for my clamp meter, which appears to be hidden from me. Of course, the, I can find everything else on the boat. Um, but I checked the voltage on the starting battery here. It's at 11.82. When we turn the key, the starter does not start at all. So the batteries are combined right now. And I see 42 amps right now flowing out so uh that's taking power out of the house bank and should be uh moving it into the starting battery um which is which is good which is what i expect because the um because we're at a higher voltage on the um on the on the lithium battery bank on the house bank so um so when we turn the key, nothing happens now where it did before. And I'm wondering for the half hour, 40 minutes, when I saw I, what I saw happening was I was seeing positive juice going into the house bank. And I'm like, that DC to DC charger should be charging the starting battery first before it's taking excess energy and moving it over. And I think what it was doing was I had this thing running for a half hour and it was even draining the starting battery even further. So... Now we're just gonna we're just gonna let uh, the batteries kind of soak. The batteries are combined. Um, I should have plenty of energy, uh, a lot more energy in in the house bank, um, but I can't get enough pull to even turn the motor over with the batteries combined like I was able to earlier. So that's a bit of a concern. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do at this point if uh, if I'm gonna be hosed or not. The best thing we can do is we can wait. Andy is going over to get his little uh, portable battery uh, charger thing, and we're going to give that a shot as well. So, um, so we'll sit here. I'll kind of watch the uh, watch the power flow, and hopefully get enough juice in the starting battery to turn it over. The other thing I want to check is there's a fuse on the engine. Uh, I think on the ignition that I want to check. So this, this is the fuse that's on the motor. I was able to find it fairly easily. It's, it's, oops. it's just right in here. So it's fine. I can visually inspect that and you can see it's, it's good. So I'll plug it back in. At least we've, we've ruled that out. Um, I'm sure it's a battery voltage power issue. All right, that was enough to get us started. So we're, uh, we're good there. We got to clean up uh, a little bit so we don't short shit out again. First thing I want to do is isolate the batteries. So we should be just charging um, only the engine right now. I'm going to take a look at the Balmar charge controller and see uh, what it's saying the battery voltage is and uh, see if it's charging in bulk. I can hear the alternator squeak a little bit. So I think we're good. Let's take a look.
too. All right, with our engine running, we're gonna haul up and hopefully we're gonna have another issues. Let's. Pretty smooth anchor pickup, so I'm happy with that. We're drifting. Let's uh, let's get the show on the road here. All right, man. One last drive by. Right on, man. Have a good trip back. You too. Have a good one. Boat's looking pretty shiny, man. Be safe. All right, you too. Kill dragger is off and up out. Yeah. I'm. Uh, don't turn that motor. Off. I'm not turning this effing motor off. <laughs> Right on, man. All right, hopefully you get some decent sailing back. I hope so. I'm going to wait a couple hours and it should be good. All right, don't forget the swim ladder, G. I won't. All right. 1030, I'm at about 12 and a half nautical miles out. Look at the shipping lanes. I can see a cargo ship over here. That's the Matsonia. And uh, they're about 8 miles, 8.1 nautical miles away with the CPA of... Two and a half miles, a little better than two and a half nautical miles. So at this point, uh, no risk of collision. Not not too concerned with them. They're uh, doing 10.69 knots, speed over ground. So I don't see any other ships yet. A little lumpy. We've got the Mad Sonia off our bow at about uh, two and a half nautical miles. We'll be crossing the southbound shipping lane after that. So. Uh, so far, pretty uneventful crossing. Hope it stays that way. We got about six knots of true. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put up the main, or at least a little bit of motor sailing, dampen us a little bit. We got a little bit of uh, <clears throat> a little bit of waves coming coming across the beam. All right. All right. It's uh, 20 till 1 p.m. We've got some rollers coming in on us a little bit. But our friends from uh, Avalon coming in, Super Express. No wake sign. Wake. These guys hurried so they could get right in front of me. 